Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today's video explores the creepiest things that happened to night owls while everyone else was sleeping. Stay tuned for these eerie stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more chilling content. Okay, so I live with my grandma in this town home association for elderly citizens aged 50 plus. It's kind of a private type community, as you have to turn into a private drive to get to the little block with the townhomes, and that's the only way to get in or out of the block, so there's no reason for anyone besides residents to come in there or even pass through because you can't go anywhere besides around a block. Anyways, I have some issues that make it very hard for me to sleep, and I rarely do, so I regularly sit outside in front of my grandma's unit and smoke cigarettes at night. So one night I go outside and light a cig, and I'm just sitting there relaxing when I notice a tree that hasn't been there before over to the left of me a little down the road, where I'm sitting in front of my grandma's unit and I'm facing other units and the street that's only used for getting around the association, and I didn't think anything of it at first until I noticed what looked like a dog walking around it. So I start paying a little closer attention, and I see that the tree isn't a tree at all, but a person. Mind you, it's 3am in an old person community. I've never seen anybody here up at that time before, let alone outside walking their dog or whatever I saw. As soon as I notice that it's a person, the dog starts walking towards me down the street, and I wasn't scared because it wasn't running and it wasn't a very big dog, so I just continued to sit and smoke and watch it. But, as soon as the dog stepped into a small shadow, I lost sight of it. And the weirdest thing is that the dog never came out of that shadow. It was the shadow from a little Virgin Mary statue in the backyard of another resident, and the shadow couldn't have been more than three feet long and a foot wide with nothing around it. Confused, I stood up and walked a little closer to see if I could figure out where the dog had gone. I never saw the dog, but as soon as I got a little closer to the man, he started walking towards me too, but very quickly. This scared the shit out of me, so I quickly ran into my garage and shut the garage door. After about 5 minutes of nothing, I opened the garage door again and saw the man standing exactly where he had been before, as if he had never gotten closer to me. But this time, as soon as the garage door got high enough for me to see him, he literally walked sideways out of view, in a direction that would have led him nowhere besides in a circle back to the exit of the association, which was kind of near where he was originally standing. He never turned, he just walked sideways until he was out of sight. I waited for him to come around the block, since there's nowhere else he could have gone, and I knew it wasn't an old person that lived there because of how quickly he moved, but he never came back around. I never saw the dog again, either. Next night, at the same time, I went outside to smoke again and looked for him in that area but saw nothing. I went back to sit down and smoke, and I saw him. He was closer this time, on the opposite side of me to my right, standing maybe an inch or two from one of my neighbor's garage doors with his face towards the closed door. Even though there was some light, I could not make out any features or even what clothing he was wearing. He stood like that for at least three hours. I kept looking out my window to check and see if he had moved, but he never did. I waited a little bit and checked again once the sun was barely coming up, and he was nowhere to be found. I haven't seen him since either. My mother raised my brother and me alone. I have memories of weekends at my dad's house until I was about 4, but then he just disappeared. When I was 10, my mom, brother, and I moved across town. We also heard my dad had been in prison, which explains his disappearance, but wanted to send letters to rekindle contact. I played clarinet then and decided I would make him a tape of me playing one night. About a week before this happened, my mom and I were driving in our van, and she was happy I had gotten good grades. This is relevant later. So back to the clarinet. My mom would go to family anonymous meetings once a week because my brother was an alcoholic. She would usually be gone until 10-ish, leaving me alone. I was in my brother's room, recording myself playing clarinet on his stereo, when I heard my mom kind of sing-songy dance down our hallway into her bedroom, saying, I'm so proud you got straight A's, I can't wait to tell grandma. I say, okay, and freeze. It's only like 8, and she didn't say anything when she got home. I stopped recording, and I walked to the door. The house was dark. Nobody answered when I called. The garage was empty. I was alone. I went back and replayed the tape. It was there, her voice. I stayed the next two hours alone in the driveway until she got home. She heard the tape but refused to admit that anything happened. I have zero explanations. Sometime around last year. I was sitting on my porch one night, enjoying a cool summer breeze with cherry Pepsi in hand, and suddenly I heard gunshots coming from the fields. This isn't uncommon, we have a lot of hunters around the area. But then I started hearing gunshots from what was clearly a different gun, 
It was more of a cracking sound than a boom, smaller caliber, I think. The gunshots were successive, and we don't get many deer or moose around here, so usually by now you'd hear coyotes or foxes yipping in the distance, but nothing, nothing but what sounded like a firefight in the distance. I went inside and looked from my bedroom window to see if I could spot any muzzle flares. I couldn't see a thing, they must have been deep in the trees or in a ditch somewhere. After about three minutes, the gunfire stopped. I started to think I heard a firefight or something, maybe I heard shouting or something. It could have been a neighbor shouting at them. Being the dumbass that I am, I decided to check out the field the next day and look around the area. All I could find were casings and bloodstains on the grass, some of them looked like a rifle, others like a pistol. I dunno, not much of a gun guy. Could have been a firefight? Or maybe just a panic over missing some games? Maybe it was just a deer or something and they missed a lot of shots. Either way, it freaked me out. I've been keeping an eye on local missing person reports to see if anything comes up, but there's nothing so far. I went for a walk at about 3 AM while listening to music. I know it is very stupid. Anyways, I was walking for like 5 minutes around my neighborhood when I noticed this truck just casually cruising down the street I was walking on. I'm a paranoid dude, and I was smoking, so I thought maybe I'm just freaking out because of the weed. To prove myself wrong, I hit a turn to the right and was starting to make my way back home. The truck hit a right too. Now I would be home with this last turn, and I hurried away while this weirdo was still following me. In front of my house is a stop sign, and I took off after passing it, hurrying for my door. This guy turns his truck lights off and parks in front of the stop sign. My house has a gate that guards the door. I'm inside this gate, staring at him, and he is literally at the stop sign with the windows tinted out, just watching me. I knew he was because he was there for minutes, literally sitting there. When I went inside to get my parents, he was gone. I was like 14 at the time, living in Mississippi. This was in 2015, and I think some old lady was beaten to death in her own house nearby. So, I don't know, guys. So I was finally getting ready to go to bed, and the rest of my family had all gone to bed two hours prior to the event. I was sitting up watching some YouTube on my phone with headphones on, and I felt like I was constantly being watched, I hallucinate quite frequently during the night, and I felt like I saw some kind of mass in my dresser, like a large black cloud, but when I turned my light on, it was a dressing gown wrapped up on the top shelf of the dresser. I turn off my light, completely shut down my phone and headphones and put them on charge, and I close my eyes, I take around 30 minutes to doze off. Within the period of me dozing off, I'm immediately startled by my phone playing some song that I don't quite remember, bear in mind this was years ago, and I get up, totally creeped out by the noise, and I check my phone. It's off, but it's still making noise. I turn it on, and a shuffling noise occurs in my dresser, fully closed. I get up, flick my light on, and open the dresser's sliding door, to which I find my dressing gown sprawled across the floor, which was previously on the top shelf right at the back. I was so spooked, I legit thought I was having some sort of nightmare, but I knew I was awake, and somehow my parents didn't hear the noise, and they're not deep sleepers. All of it was very weird, but there's been no more incidents since then, luckily. For a little background, my wife has a few daily medications and dietary supplements she takes right before bed. Occasionally, in the hustle and bustle of us getting our toddler ready for bed and are going to bed herself, she forgets to take them. No big deal, she usually wakes up around midnight or one, takes them, and goes back to bed. So anyway, one night I'm upstairs playing on the computer around 2.30 or so, and I hear pill bottles rattling around in the kitchen. Unusual, I think, as my wife is typically pretty good about keeping all her pills in one of those Sunday to Saturday pill containers, but not unprecedented. I decide to head down to the kitchen to kiss her goodnight and let her know I'd be going to bed soon. I get about halfway down the stairs to where the wall ends and the banister begins, and I peer over the banister towards the kitchen. There are no signs of movement or noises. I reach the bottom of the stairs, one cat slinking down the stairs behind me, if you own cats, you know the low walk they do when they're investigating something. I make my way to the kitchen, and. Nothing. I look towards the downstairs bathroom, and the door is wide open, lights out, and empty. I crack the bedroom door, and she's fast asleep. Now, we've got a security system. When it's armed, if an exterior door or window is opened or glass is broken, the alarm will pretty much wake the entire neighborhood. Nobody has entered the house. I definitely heard the noise because it managed to wake the cat, who also went to investigate the noise. I have no idea what made the noise, but that's also the night I started leaving lights on in the house until I went to bed. I've heard footsteps and what sound like quiet conversations in the house late at night before, 
but I have always chalked them up to my imagination, but I definitely heard something in the kitchen that night. I have a couple, both of which take place before I was a night owl, and one of which was in the morning, but nearly everyone else was still asleep, so I counted. When I had just turned six, my family moved to another state. The worst part about the move for me was that the heater would make this loud, creepy noise, which still occurs occasionally, that was really easy to hear in my room at night. Somehow I got it into my head that if I didn't get up and run into the middle of the hallway whenever it happened while I was in my room at night, something bad would happen. Then no one else would show up there, which, for some reason, I wouldn't worry about, but I was genuinely afraid that something terrible would happen whenever the heater made that noise. We still live in that house, 14 years later. I still don't like the sound the heater makes, but at least now I know it won't kill me. A few years after moving into that house, my family went on an annual vacation with my dad's high school friends and their families. This was around the time that the first iPod touches and iPhones were coming out, and my sister and I, 8 and 10, weren't yet familiar with all the ringtones, text slash alert tones, and timer tones that you can choose from on those devices. So we got up one morning, probably around 7 a.m., to hear the sci-fi tone going off in someone's room. We didn't know what it was. We assumed it was the heater or something, since the one at our house made creepy noises too, but we were still scared as fuck. We were roaming the house trying to figure out the source of the sound for what felt like forever before discovering it was just someone's timer. It's also really creepy when you hear weird bangs and stuff from your basement or storage area, even if you know it's just an appliance and is totally normal. It's pretty startling. These kinds of things are why I like to have background noise of some kind, TV, YouTube, etc., whenever I'm up early or late or home alone. This wasn't super late at night, but it was night, so that counts, right? My wife and I were up late watching TV when I noticed what I thought was the HVAC getting louder, or humming or something. Then I notice it's getting a lot louder. I turned to my wife and asked if she heard it. She did, and it escalated fairly quickly after that. I determined it was coming from outside, we live in a fairly rural area that is flat and can see for miles. I opened the front door, and it was definitely louder. My wife mentioned that she was getting a headache from it, and after I walked outside, I was immediately nauseous. The sound was a low hum that was steady. I couldn't pinpoint a direction, it seemed to come from all around. It was a clear night, no aircraft, no traffic, not a train, nothing. It got pretty intense, and I felt like I was going to puke. My wife said the headache was almost unbearable. I covered my ears, but I could feel it viscerally. Then it stopped and faded pretty fast. My nausea continued for quite a while. The next day, I spoke with some neighbors, and they heard it as well, with similar side effects. A little networking, and I found the folks about 7 miles on either side of our farm had the same experience. I've investigated every possible natural and man-made cause I could think of, and a few I couldn't think of, and still have no idea what it was. Backstory, I have a one-story ranch-style house with very high ceilings, and the front doors are big metal doors with a handle like a button on top to open the door. When you open the door, it makes a clicking noise, and when you attempt to open the door when it's locked, it makes the same noise except it isn't completed. Hopefully, you can all picture that. We have double doors, and one of them has a false handle, where the button can be positioned upwards but still move down and make a similar noise. My neighborhood itself is pretty nice, but we live next to a bad town with a decent amount of crime, and at night, people from the other town like to come to our neighborhood and break into cars, and why not because we live in a better area. There is a highway as a barrier between our two towns, and it's probably about a mile from my house into the next town, no more than two, and we live next to a state park with mile-long trails for horses and the park, literally four houses from my house. When I was probably 14 or 15, I was in my living room watching TV, and it was like 2 a.m. I turned off the TV and started to fold whatever blanket I was using and do whatever I could to clean up the living room on my way into my room. Because the house was absolutely silent, as I'm starting to leave the room, I hear the door handle click. The fake door handle makes a different noise, and that's the one I heard. But I thought maybe I was hearing things. I continue to go to my room, and then I hear the actual door handle click twice. The windows on the door are fogged, almost so you can't see through them, but you can see figures and I see what looks like not one, but two people walking away from the house. By the time I wasn't freaking out, they were already gone, and I didn't want to wake up my parents and didn't think there was anything that could be done. They were probably long gone. Since then, I have slept with my bedroom door locked every night, in case we for some reason forget to lock the front door. We also now have a camera in front of the house. But I was terrified. It doesn't sound that creepy. 
but I guess being a teenage girl and witnessing people attempt to walk into your house at 2 a.m. is pretty scary. I see a lot of weird stuff, and I go on walks all the time, which just adds to the weird stuff. One time a friend and I were walking around, probably a mile away from my apartment, and we ended up on this odd street. It was odd because it was so dark compared to the rest of the city, like all of a sudden pitch black, everything was a shadow, but I could sort of see figures just standing in the shadows, not really doing anything. As we were walking through the area just talking, I loudly proclaimed, if we were going to get jumped and raped, this would be the place. Luckily, my friend is tall and bulky, and I look sketchy enough, so nothing happened. Also, one time at around 2 to 3 a.m., I walked pretty far from my place into a suburb with no street lights and oddly quiet. It wasn't a sketchy area, compared to the rest of where I live, it's kind of nice, but I kept hearing noises, which freaked me out, honestly, it probably was nothing. However, at the end of the street, I see a window with a light that was flashing irregularly. As I got closer, it kept flashing and was probably doing this for an hour. When I got up to the window, I know, kind of pervy, but like, I didn't see anyone, and the window was wide open and close to the street, I saw the broken lamp that was clearly tossed around but still plugged in, but the entire room was trashed. The bed was flipped over and moved around, same with desks and tables. The place was kind of empty, looking back on it, I think the place was robbed, and I just missed it. Probably my scariest moment was running home from a friend's house at about 4 am I should clarify that I was in early 20s, 6 tall male, and I was running because it was cold rather than because I felt threatened. Next thing I know, this angry old woman sprints after me and grabs me by the shoulder, shrieking about her garden and threatening to call the cops. The whole time, she's doing her best to overpower me and pull me to the ground for a citizen's arrest. Being assaulted by someone threatening is probably worse, but it's a weird experience to be attacked by someone where you're scared that any form of resistance might cause them to break a bone from their own force. Once I sat down, she called the cops, and I finally got the story. Apparently some guys had been throwing stones at her house and trespassing in her garden, a horrible thing to do. She saw me running up the street, assumed I was one of them, went into a rage, and decided to take matters into her own hands. I've never seen anyone as shocked as the police officer when I tested sober and was able to explain being out as well, WWE No Way Out just finished, and I was going home, an alibi backed up by my mate. There was this guy in my neighborhood who would be super weird and suspicious, he would ask people for money, and if they said no, he'd slash their tires, threaten them, etc. He was a fucked up dude. A few years ago, we had a power outage due to a storm, and we noticed him walking around outside across the street, being his weird self, but we thought nothing of it since he's never bothered us. Since, at the time, my bedroom was in the basement and there was no power, the room in the back of my basement had a constant beeping sound. Around 2 a.m., I was not only fed up with it, I also had the strangest feeling that I shouldn't be down there, so I went upstairs to sleep on my living room floor since the couch was taken. I was watching YouTube, and around 3 30 ish, since my ear was up against the floor, I could hear pretty well through the floor, I heard a loud banging sound coming from my basement door. At first, I thought I was just hearing things, but it kept happening and wouldn't stop. I gained the courage to go by my window, and I see outside the door a weird guy banging on my basement door. It turns out my uncle had a run-in with him and obviously denied him the money he asked for, and he ended up coming back. He got arrested later that month for assault, so I never saw him again. I live in a building that has its parking lot in front of it, parallel to the pedestrian entrance, and on the other side of the road there are some dense woods with tall grass. One or two months ago, during the summer, I went out to get some air at 4 o'clock in the morning, sounds stupid, I know, but the neighborhood is really safe and I regularly go out past midnight, and took my phone with me to listen to some music. About 5 minutes after getting outside, I realized that the car gate was broken and was left open, should have been my first red flag, but I think nothing of it and continue to lay down in the grass and listen to some music while looking at the stars. And then it starts. I begin to feel like I'm being watched. I now stand up and look around, over the parked cars and under them. No one. I think to myself that it's just my brain playing tricks with me because I noticed the gate was open. But it won't stop. Every 15 seconds or so, I would look around to see if there's anyone in the street, at the windows looking down and nothing. There's not a single soul in the building or around it except me. But then I heard something. The grass moved. I still think it's my brain playing tricks, so I pause the music and take off my earbuds while staring into the woods. It felt like an eternity. But then I heard it again, and this time it didn't stop and continued moving. My heart was pounding, but it could just be a rat. I didn't stop to see what it was when I was able to see the grass move. 
flight or fight instinct took over, and I ran as fast as I could to my apartment, which, thankfully, is on the first floor, while hearing its steps on the pavement. I came in and shut the door behind me. I could hear it on the other side, puffing without air after running after me. I didn't dare to look through the peephole in the door. It then took two more steps and knocked on my door. I grabbed my hiking knife and prepared for the worst, having to fight someone for my own life. After a few seconds that seemed like an eternity, it went away. I still don't know who it was or what it wanted, but I didn't get any sleep for the rest of that night. I used to work the night shift for years. It was easier on my days off to keep my schedule, so I'd be quietly awake doing my thing most nights. My dog acclimated to it as well, and we'd go for walks in the middle of the night. Walking through the neighborhood at night, we'd see coyotes or raccoons doing stuff. But one night stands out. The neighborhood I lived in was in a rural area between two mid-sized towns. It was just a U-shaped road connected to the highway on either end. On the other three sides, there were corn fields. So Wentworth and I would just walk the loop. One night, around 4 a.m., I was walking Wentworth on a Monday morning when I witnessed something weird. We were coming up on the highway when Wentworth pulled me over a bit off the sidewalk so he could pee on a particular bush. We were maybe 30 feet from reaching the highway. Wentworth was all black, and I was wearing dark clothes. Off the sidewalk, we were in a pretty dark and shaded area. So I don't think the car that slowed down and stopped under the street lamp at the corner could see us while I waited for Wentworth to do his thing. Under the street light, a man got out of the car and walked around to his trunk. He popped the trunk and pulled out a 5-gallon Coleman cooler. One that had a dispenser on it because he lifted the cooler over his head and started drinking out of the dispenser. Just chugging. I stood there and watched this man chugging from the cooler, and time just seemed to drag on. I looked down at Wentworth, and he was beside me, also just watching the man in the car. The leash was slack, he wasn't pulling to get moving. The street lamp was cut off, as they do sometimes, leaving the man just illuminated by his brake lights. It seemed to me like he was drinking for way longer than should have been possible before he put it back in his trunk, got in the car, and drove away. That was just weird. I'm a gamer. I have been since I was young. Usually I stay up until 2 or 3 am one night I was just playing a game, and I had my blinds open. Where my PC is set up, I can see out my window, which has a view down my street. Around midnight or so, I was playing a game when I saw a white SUV park across the street, two houses to the right. Across from my neighbor's house. I immediately saw this as a red flag. I got up, closed my blinds, and went to my front room, where I could watch the vehicle with a better, more hidden view. Standing there for about 10 minutes, I never saw the person get out. Just before I was about to head back to my room, I saw another vehicle's headlights turn on. This vehicle was parked outside my house, facing my driveway. Not more than 20 seconds later, a teenager comes running out from behind one of my cars and takes off down my street to the right. The car parked outside my house followed him very quickly, as if to catch the teenager. It was a small black car. Honda maybe. Not long after the black car had driven off, the white SUV followed. To this day, this happened several months ago, I do not know who he was or why he was hiding. Another instance happened last year, when a man in a hoodie was walking down my street late at night. The garbage was going to be picked up that day, so we had our trash cans out. He sees me from my window and ducks behind my neighbor's trash can across the street from my house. I watched and waited to see what he would do, while he watched and waited to see what I would do. I was in a different area of my house, so I'd assume he thought I had left. Eventually he got up and started walking back the way he came, never to be seen again. This happened when I was young. I have a neighbor who owns a house that is usually rented out to people every once in a while. They live behind my house, and their house is further down from the house they rent out to people. They have a lot of property. I lived in a different room at this time, but I was still the late bugger playing video games. I glance out my window and see their curtains have shifted slightly to the left. It's not dark in my room, but dark enough for me to see their curtains. As soon as I turn my head to get a full look, the curtains close abruptly. I never saw anyone, but no one lived in that house during that time. I'd assume it was a homeless person watching me play games, but it was creepy enough for me to feel uncomfortable, turn off my game, and head to bed. This isn't my story, but my mother's story, who stayed up late watching TV one night. Sitting on the couch, you can see our backyard. While watching TV, she swore she saw someone running around. I'd give that's true considering my dogs would have gone nuts, but it's definitely creepy to think about. I used to have weird stuff like this happen quite frequently. These are the stories that I can remember best. I've had one car drive slowly down my street every night at the same time for a week. 
I've also had a person break into my backyard while I'm home. At the time, I was sharing a house with four other people. I do a lot of rotating shift work, and this night I was preparing for work the next night by staying up watching movies until stupid o'clock. My housemates all turned in for the night, so I moved my movie marathon into my room, where it would be less disruptive to their sleep. Another movie or two in, and I start to hear a scratching noise at my window. Initially, I didn't think much of it, just a branch or something, I hot. Back to watching my movies. The scratching continues, and after about 10 minutes, I remember that there aren't any trees outside my window. This started to make me feel a little uneasy. I went to the other side of my room and retrieved my just-in-case defensive tool, which happened to be a sword, approximately one meter long, and went back to watching movies. Not two minutes later, my window slid upward. The sudden breeze lifted my blinds. Reflexively, I stood up and drew my sword. It made the most glorious noise I'd heard. The window promptly slid shut with a solid thud. With adrenaline still pumping, I decided it would be a good idea to take a look outside. I checked the yard and couldn't see anyone. At that point, I felt like I had imagined the whole thing. I returned to my bedroom and carried on as I had planned. The next day, I brought it up with a couple of my housemates. It turns out that it had happened at every window around the house. Mine was just the only one that would open. It freaked me out for a little while. I'm a backshift security guard at a retirement home, and I'm starting to believe this place is haunted. I know the tag says serious, but I'm dead fucking serious. I've been here since last September, and early on, one of the other guards, a lovely young woman named Charlotte, made a passing reference to this place being haunted. I laughed it off and treated it as a joke, but suddenly she's seen shit and in the months since, I've started seeing shit too. Strange shapes moving just at the corner of my vision when I'm alone or faces in open doorways that vanish when I try to focus on them. I brushed all this off, just the sleepiness catching up to me, right? A month or two ago, we had a resident pass away. His room is right behind where I am sitting now. The doorway isn't five feet from me. And two weeks ago, while I'm alone and reading Reddit to stay awake, I feel someone tap my left shoulder. Other than me, there's four people in this wing. The resident I'm watching, whom I am directly facing, will be immediately aware if he leaves his room. Another resident who is senile and has a room in the corner is well within my view. Another resident is wheelchair bound and rarely leaves his room, so I would know if he left, and a fourth is bedridden in the other room behind me. So unless the bedridden resident made a miraculous recovery, snuck out of his room, tapped my left shoulder when his room was on my right, and then snuck back into his room before I could check? Who the fuck tapped my shoulder? That brings us to tonight. The plumbing in the Ambrose, RIP, bathroom spontaneously started running earlier tonight, as if someone were in there using the washroom. As long as I knew him, Ambrose was bedridden. Some weird shit goes on here. I was staying the night at a friend's house in high school because I think she had an EKG the next day and wasn't allowed to sleep for it. She knew I was a night owl, so she usually invited me over to keep her company and make sure she didn't snooze off whenever this happened. So one of these nights, we're sitting in her room around 2.30 or 3 a.m. Her parents and little brother had all gone to bed sometime around 10-ish. And none had exited their rooms since. So we're sitting there, chatting about whatever we would have been chatting about at that time, and her doorbell fucking rings. Now keep in mind that she has a pretty distinctive doorbell sound. It's not a simple ding or chime, but more of a short music Y tune, so we knew we couldn't have misheard it. So we sought her out into the living room, me leading, in pitch blackness, because we weren't allowed to turn on the lights after her parents went to sleep. And the only light in the room from the hallway is coming from the moonlight shining through the clear screen door where the doorbell was. From our position, we can't make out anyone near the doorway outside, and we kind of just laugh it off and credit it to our imaginations or a fluke. Then, as we're walking back down the dark hall to her room, we fucking hear it again. At that point, my friend decided to fucking step outside to look around, which is something I don't think she'd ever have decided to do if she wasn't so sleep deprived, she's usually pretty faint hearted, if we're being honest. And even though I thought we could have figured out a better plan, I had her back, so I quickly followed her outside and stepped onto her brick driveway, just about ready to fight if we needed to. For the life of us, we couldn't figure out what happened. She lived in a pretty affluent neighborhood with big, spacious, well mowed yards, so you'd have thought we'd seen some dashing away if they had simply rang the bell and ditched. And each side of the house on our left and right were fenced off pretty high, and it was unlikely they would have been able to run and leap over. We timidly checked around her car, even inside and under it, and there was just nothing, no signs anyone had been there or around the yard. To this day, I have no clue what was going on outside, maybe a faulty doorbell, 
but she insisted after that it never had problems and after that it hadn't since the occurrence. It still kind of gives me chills thinking of it.